Alright, I think it's about time we made a video, isn't it? Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. But you guys thought I was dead. Now I've just been rearranging my hi-fi system, or whatever you want to call it. And... Got a couple of little bits and pieces that are going to be the subject of this video. I'll just give you a little tour of my stereo system first. Got these two nice, and I've no idea what the brand is, speakers, but they've got a very good sound to them. Then, I've got my one of my reel-to-reels. And this is the amplifier that I'm using. Although I think I'm going to have to do something about this because the sound on this amp this amplifier is like... I only have to turn it up a little tiny bit and it's already blasting, so... Yeah, I'm going to need to tame that down a little bit. And there's my turntable that I'm making from a BSR deck and I found a nice case to put it in. So that's still a little bit of a work in progress, but it works. Just giving you a demonstration of it. Okay, it's decided it's not having it. I haven't got the amplifier on at the moment, so you won't hear anything. Because I don't want to get into copyright issues. And then we've got my tape recorder slash audio mixer. So that's coming on quite well. Alright, so what we've got here in glorious swing vision is a couple of little things that arrived today that I ordered. There's a lot more coming, but these arrived today. This is a thermostat, digital thermostat, which I'm going to use to adjust my heater because think about things like radiators and heaters and things like that, you can adjust the, you know, if they've got built-in thermostats, you, yeah, you can regulate the temperature, but you're regulating the temperature of the heater itself and not the temperature of the room. So hopefully that's going to sort that. So I'm not going to be boiling hot at night and freezing cold in the morning because I can never get it just right. And this thing is like a dimmer switch on steroids, I guess. And I'm going to use that to adjust the speed of my fan. Now, before anybody says anything, I know that this kind of thing isn't the best thing to adjust the speed of a fan motor, but it should work. And this fan has definitely seen better days. Now, when I got it, it was way too strong for this room. It had three speeds, fast, faster, and hurricane. So I decided I'd run this off a 120 volt transformer, which would make the speeds more reasonable, and that worked. But now, after several years, it's gotten really, really slow. So, speed 3 is now more like speed 2, and speed 2 is now more like speed 1. And on speed 1, it barely moves at all. And I know why. It's because the motor has got all gunged up with oily dust that's accumulated inside it. And I know what you're saying. Just take the motor apart and clean it, damn it. Well, I tried that. But it's been riveted together. And trying to drill out those rivets just spins the rivets round and round and round and I don't get anywhere. So, there's no way that's coming apart. So instead, I'm going to run it off a variable speed controller. And of course with this thing I'll be able to vary the speed so I can have it more where I want it. This did get a little bit damaged in shipping, but I think it'll be perfectly fine. Let's just take all this blue plastic covering off. This could take a while. Well, I had to take the thing apart to get all this stuff out. They put that covering on and then they put it together. I would have done it in the other way around, but... Anyway, I'm putting this back together now, so, uh, yeah, um, this bit is a little bit tricky to get in. At first I thought it was riveted on, but no. Nope. It just goes in like that and then snaps in place like that. Just need to screw the screws back in and we'll be good to go. Now on to item number two, the thermostat. 
Let's just give this a little power up and see what it makes of the room's temperature. According to my um, clock that I've got, the temperature in here is 29 Celsius, but that does actually read a little bit high, so I think this one might be a little bit more accurate. Oh, it took a little longer than expected. The wires were rather reluctant to go in, but let's see what it makes of the room. Alright, so we're at 28 Celsius. Now, I don't know what the buttons do. I've got one here called set. So imagine that is how you set the temperature you want. I think they're setting different temperature programs, I guess. I guess that's Fahrenheit, maybe? How do we get out of setup? So yeah, all I need to do is figure out how to set the temperature on this thing. Also, I'm going to stick another relay onto this because this one is only rated for 5 amps. So I'll have that relay switching another relay which is actually going to switch the heater on and off. Because this relay is just going to go... Bleh. Okay, I think I got it because it's flashing now. So I want to set this to about 28. That's where I'm comfortable. Okay, so I've got another relay here. This was out of an old microwave. This should be able to handle the current, so let's just see if it still works. I've got it hooked up to my meter, so if we hear a beep, I'm going to activate the relay coil. It's a 12 volt relay, but a 9 volt battery should be able to actuate it. You know, it's good. Oh, it would help if I had the meter on to beep. Yep, that's good. Right, well, this is my plan. I've got this wall adapter here. It says 12 volts, but it's no, it, it is nowhere near, but there's no regulation on this. So, it's going to go into this little buck boost converter. And that's going to power this, and it's also going to power this relay. But I don't know which wire is the positive and which wire is the negative, because sometimes the strut wire is the positive, sometimes it's the negative, it's hard to tell. So I'm just going to plug this in. And let's have a look at what voltage it's actually cut. So, um, let's put that on to volts. So I'm going to assume the wire without a stripe is the negative for now. Let's see what we get. I'll just hold it on there. The crocodile clip broke off. Now we're getting about 17 volts out of this power supply. So I've got the striped wire on the meter's red lead and it's not reading negative so we know that is the positive. The striped wire is the positive. Alright, so I'm not going to connect this up to this just yet because I want to make sure that the voltage coming out of this is going to be 12 volts. I mean, if it boosts it to like 30 volts or something like that, then we can say goodbye to this thing. So, let's see what voltage we actually get. Okay, I guess I must have pre-adjusted that one. But we're getting 12 volts out of it, so that's good. Alright. I think it's about time to mount this on the wall. So I first mounted it on a piece of cardboard. And to those of you who like to criticise my construction skills, I don't have construction skills, okay? And cardboard is easy to work with. Well, I think this is as good as any place to put it. So let me just go through what each of these wires are. So We've got our supply voltage in. And then we've got this one here going to our little probe. And these wires here are going to go out to the other relay, which I'm in the process of wiring up. And here's the relay all wired up. Yes, I am going to put insulation around the wires. Actually, I'm going to have to go quite a bit mad with the insulation because 
These two terminals here, which are going to turn on and off the mains, are also connected here as well, so, yeah. Well, looks like I will have to find a manual for this thing after all, because I've just got absolutely no idea how to set this thing. This I know. This is how you set the temperature. Yeah, you get all those other things to come up. We've got this PO. I thought those were different programs, but apparently not, because if I press set button, PO seems to do like difference between H and C. I assume that means hot and cold, but I don't know if that means the relay is going to come on when it gets too cold or go off when it gets too cold or whatever. Have I tried it on this one? Now I've got a number coming up saying 2.0. I have no idea what that's referring to. If I put this onto P2, got another number come up. 110. I don't know what that means. P3. Well, I'm going to assume that's some kind of temperature. And maybe that's what P2 was. I have no idea what that 0.0, .0 means. Or what that means on there, so yeah. Uh. Off, on. But what am I turning off and what am I turning on? Right, I think I've got this figured out now. So I've set this for 27 degrees Celsius. So I'm just going to heat up the little probe here with my hand. It should go off when we get to it. There we go. 27 degrees. Although you can't really see it because the wire's in the way. Now, I thought this was defective because it wasn't coming back on when the temperature got lower. But I think what the actual problem is, is if we're going to set and find P2, I think it was. No, maybe it was P1. I think this is the hysteresis, or how you've, however you pronounce it. So I think if I set that to go a little bit lower, maybe half a degree, maybe. We'll see what we get from that. All right, so currently the probe is at 20, just just on the edge of 27.0 degrees, so if I've got this right, when that gets down to about 25.5, I mean 26.5, that should come back on. Alright, let's see if it does it. If it gets cold enough, of course. Ah, there we go. Might take a little fine adjustment before I get the temperature where I want it, but you know. Also, I hope the relay is not going to keep me up at night when it's clicking on and off, but I don't really think it will. I'm going to have to put something across this display because that is going to... I'm going to have to put something across this display because that is going to be really bright at night, especially that LED there. That is blindingly bright. Okay, I've been playing quite insane trying to reverse engineer this thing. Trouble is, some of the traces are on both sides of the board, and that threw me off quite a bit. And Why am I talking like that? But yeah, this is the circuit that I came up with. Over here, we've got all the basic stuff that you would expect to see. But then over here, we've got some weird stuff going on with a... <gasps> no, I'm not going to do it. A rectifier and a couple of resistors. I've never seen that before. It's very weird. But at least we have a snubber on the input, so it should be alright with inductive loads, such as a fan motor. Now here in the Clem Lab, safety is not our number one concern. Anyway, I've got this hooked up to the wall, so we'll just give this a little test and make sure that it works. Now let's turn it up and see. 
Yeah, that appears to be working, so let's hook this up to the fan. Right, the fan's ready to be wired up, and I've got the old switch on the bench. Now, I want to find out which wires connect where, and I want to find out which wires connect when I have it on the one setting. Now, originally I had that fan on a 120 volt transformer because if this was running on the full mains voltage, even on the one setting, it would still be too much for this room. So, I'm going to find out which wires connect. Now, I think it's pretty obvious what the blue wire and the yellow and green wire are, but I want to make absolutely certain. So, I'm pretty sure this is going to be Earth. Let me put my meter onto continuity. Right, let's get our Earth wire here. Okay, good. Let's see if the blue one is on neutral. Uh, let's see if I can find the wire. Yep, the blue is the neutral, so no worries there. So, which of these remaining three wires does the live connect when I've got it on setting one? Alright, so I've got my meter connected to the live wire on this end of the switch. So let's see which of the three remaining wires it's going to be. Let's see, it's either going to be the white or the black, I think. So uh, let's check the white first. Oh, there we are, right away. Let's make sure none of the other wires are doing anything. Good. And good, so white wire it is. Okay, so I'm doing a few little experiments here, just um, seeing how well the fan takes the juice from this thing. I would help if the camera was actually pointing at it. So I'm gradually increasing the power and keeping an eye on the temperatures of the motor and the uh, motor run capacitor, making sure that nothing is getting warm. That seems all right. I don't know if the motor is, I mean, if the fan is blowing into the camera's microphone too much. The motor's about as warm as it normally gets, so that's good. Let's see if this thing's getting warm at all. Hmm. I'd say lukewarm. So yeah, I'm just going to keep doing this, gradually increasing the power, and making sure that it works. The only downside so far is the motor seems a little bit noisier than it was before, but, you know, it's good as the way it's chopping up the AC waveform. Not much I can do about that. Certainly no ill effects, I can say that. I've now got this turned almost all the way up, with the fan quite happily running off that. Only downside is the motor does hum a little bit, but nothing's getting hot or showing any signs of, you know, I shouldn't be doing this. So, yeah, I'm going to say that's a success. And until next time, goodbye. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider giving me a big thumbs up, smash that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and leave a comment if you have one. And as always, until next time, goodbye. Right, chaps, boys and girls, it's time we made a video, isn't it? Right, so what we got here in glorious Sweet. And of course, with this thing, I'll be able to vary a speed. We've got Triac here. Well, I guess that's um, or SCR or something. I'll say that all over again. Guess it's just to make it as idiot. Okay, so I've serviced an old relay out of an old circuit board. So let's see if this one actually works. I don't. I, did I say serviced or harvested? Oh. I farted, but you didn't hear it. Okay, here we have the old... Right, so this is the fan. Right, so I have here the original switch from the fan. And something. Just increasing the power random... No, not randomly. Right, the fan's ready to have its new... Right, the fan's ready to... Right, the fan's ready to be wired up. I have the original switch on the bench. Because I want to find out um, something. 
I'll start again.